Who's going to speak? <laughs> Steve usually does when he's here, so. Well, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining our group. We're a group of men that have been friends for quite a while, and uh, we all love the Lord, Jesus Christ, and we get together and study his word to know him better, okay? Uh, we like the book of Proverbs a lot, and Tim Rabbit, my friend, this meeting has the idea that we've all adopted of reading one chapter a day, and uh, we've been doing that for a long time. So we're going to study the book of Proverbs today, chapter 2, and I think Tim is going to lead this, starting in verse 10. <clears throat> Let's open this with prayer real quick. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you've given us to open our eyes to the meaning of the words we're about to read. And I pray that the folks that are watching this video can also feel your presence when they watch and they can give their lives to Jesus Christ and have the Holy Spirit guide them as they live their lives for Christ. Amen. 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 Proverbs 2.10. This is the Living Bible. It's a paraphrase, but this is what I like to use. For wisdom and truth will enter the very center of your being. Let me stop right there. This truth, I mean, I mean, that word has just been showing up everywhere. I preached on it twice uh, last month, this month, and I'm going to preach on it again. Because truth right now in our society, it says in Isaiah 59, 14 and 15, truth has fallen in the streets. Truth has fallen in the public squares. And God showed me a picture of truth as a person laying on the emergency room, dying, and they had to put it on a ventilator because truth is dying in our society. And we are to be representatives and ambassadors for the truth. And so just keep that in mind as I read here this morning. For wisdom and truth will enter the very center of your being, filling your life with joy. You will be given the sense to stay away from evil men who want you to be their partners in crime. And who turn from God's ways to walk down dark and evil paths and exalt in doing wrong. For they thoroughly enjoy their sins. Everything they do is crooked and wrong. Only wisdom from the Lord can save a man from the flattery of prostitutes. And today, the modern thing, you don't see a lot of prostitutes, at least unless you're looking for them. But porn is the new word I've been putting in my margin. Only wisdom from the Lord can save a man from the flattery of prostitutes or porn. These girls have abandoned their husbands and flouted the laws of God. Their houses lie along the road to death and hell. These men who enter them are doomed. None of them will ever be the same again. Follow the steps of the godly instead and stay on the right path. For only good men enjoy life to the full. Evil men lose the good things they might have had, and they themselves will be destroyed. That's the end of the chapter two. I wrote down two guys' names when it says follow, uh, follow the steps of the good godly men instead. I wrote down Ben Blanton and Joel Oliver, because those guys are the guys that were my models for godliness. Somebody else? Well, uh, right before chapter, verse 10, where it says, for wisdom, in, in my translation of reading this from the New Living Translation, a little bit different words, but it's... Um, Right before it says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. It says, then you will understand what is right, just and fair, and you will find the way to go. Um, hmm. My newest book that uh, will be coming up in time for Christmas um, has that, that word I, I kept struggling with how to explain what we need to understand about 
the Holy Spirit and his work in our life and uh, God's plan of salvation and God's grace and the word understand. You mentioned, Tim, that, you know, that the word truth was a word that kept coming up to you for, for me, the word understand, because mm -hmm. we can hear, we can think about, we can, you know, I don't know, there, there's so much misunderstanding, uh, which leads us, mm -hmm. you know, people who don't know the truth have a misunderstanding about what is true. Uh, they they think that um, truth is relative. It is, uh, you know, dependent on uh, their d decision about what truth is. And it, it's, it's so different than that because <clears throat> truth is, is uh, definite. I mean, it, it's not wishy-washy. It's not sometimes this and sometimes that um and i you know i think you're you're right in our culture today um not just in the united states but in in global uh thinking young people have been um i don't want to say brainwashed because that that's a terminology that was more familiar, more commonly used back in, in my youthful days. But um, truth is truth. And uh, it's like gravity and, and the things that we learned that, uh, you know, Isaac Newton discovered with, <laughs> with, you know, how fast things fall to earth and, and what have you. Um, there's, there are certain principles about truth that are not comp uh, compromisable and so the the thing that you know understanding I think goes a long way to um, solidifying what is true and what is not is as we increase our understanding and that's why we study God's word because we want to get this wisdom we don't want to go around life without it uh, and stumble into, things that uh, are wrong that will not benefit us. Well, you started out in verse 10 and the very first part of that says, talks about wisdom and wisdom enters your heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about the heart a lot. It's not just head knowledge. It's, it becomes part of who you are. It goes into your heart even. Okay yeah and you'll have knowledge and it talks about in my in my version it says for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul and in verse 11 the third word i see here besides wisdom and knowledge is discretion and understanding is the fourth word so there's like four words right here discretion will protect you understanding will guard you so there's wisdom knowledge discretion and understanding that are all involved here and if you skip down to a section uh, that talks about uh, evil people, verse 15, it says their paths are crooked. But here's the other one that really strikes me, and I see it a lot. Their ways are devious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, folks are devious, and they're trying to trick you, trap you, convince you. So their paths are crooked and their ways are devious. So we need the wisdom, you know, four words I just talked about. We need the wisdom, we need knowledge, we need discretion, and we need understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, well, the other thing that's interesting is it's got two categories of, of things that it's, it's warning about here. One is it's warning us to uh, be able to adapt those four things in order to uh, be protected from evil people. But then it also talks about uh, the, uh, the uh, what do they call it here? Let's see. Talks about the seductress, right? Yeah. It talks about the adulterous woman, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the other thing. I've, I've seen, you know, very intelligent folks 
fall down here. So there's, there's two big traps. One is evil people and the other one's an adulterous woman that it's warning against. Yeah. And, and it, it, the, the your word discretion in my Bible, the word is choices. Uh, it's just so people understand, you know, what discretion, you know, the choice you make is, is you know, is the same as your discretion. Right. And the paths that you follow, um, they can lead you these twisted evil ways and, and devious. Uh, mine just says the word wrong. Yours says devious, which sounds more, there's more planning <laughs> associated right. with doing the wrong when it's devious. It's it's right. thought out wrong. You know, it's not just wrong, it's thought out wrong. Right. And uh, Yeah, they call that schemes. <laughs> right. And, and mine uh, translation talks, of, it doesn't say, seductress it, it says wisdom will save you from the immoral woman from the seductive words of the promiscuous woman and i gotta tell you and i know this is being recorded and somebody might see it and, and hear it but um you know i i a few years ago we had our 50th high school reunion and um a lot of friends you know became interested in old, uh, let's say friends that i hadn't seen for 50 years uh, <laughs> and some of them were more or less just acquaintances but when you when you're you know now you're 50 years older instead of being 18 you're 58 or whatever and, and uh and people say oh let's get together and let's have a lunch every month or let's uh let's do something to, you know, we're, we're all dying now. Let's, you know, there's not that many, you know, we're, we're going to be gone. Let's, let's get together. And I had been very afraid. I'll just put it bluntly to, I will not uh, accept an invitation from a female from my high school class to be a Facebook friend with them. But then there are still posts that get posted into our group chat. And some of the, you know, people decide they want to have a gathering. At, and if, they, if it's at a restaurant or something, I still haven't gone to many of those. But there's some uh, females from our group that have said, oh, we're going to have a, a gathering at so-and-so's house. And it's going to be at a a female's house that I know from attending a few of the things out in public that the female is single and, you know, and what have you. And I'm thinking there is no way I'm going to show up to a female's house and find out that nobody else came <laughs> or it was just me and seven girls or, or whatever. And that's wisdom. I'm, I'm just telling it. I'm putting it out there for those that are listening. Use your discretion wisely. Don't put yourself in a compromising position. Even if somebody comes to you and says, oh, you're a man of God. I need you to pray with me. Pray with her, with your wife or with a, you know, don't, don't put yourself in a situation where you're alone with somebody who's not your wife that that is not in a public place and uh you you need to just really be cautious because uh like tim said it starts out innocent and uh, all of a sudden it's you know somebody says something and it tweaks uh a, a thought and there you go you're you're on that crooked path yeah, mine says, actually, uh, verse 11, it says, you will be given the sense to stay away from, and it says evil men, but you will be given the sense to stay away. That's the wisdom. You know, you're going to be given the spirit of discernment. When you got the Holy Spirit, that's a gift of discernment. Yeah, but we all get the Holy Spirit. And part of having the Holy Spirit is that discernment. Now you can, it, the Bible says in Second Corinthians, I think it's chapter uh, 14, says, you know, covet 
the spiritual gifts. In other words, a lot of times in the Bible it says, don't covet this, don't covet that. But it says in this area, covet the gifts of the Spirit. In other words, go after them. And one of them is the gift of discernment. And we are to discern. You will be given the sense to stay away from evil. And that's part of the discernment is knowing if people are telling you the truth or they got a scheme to get you into a, a trap. And the devil is always setting traps for, for, his, for not his men, but for God's men. And he afterwards he pours on guilt, he pours on shame, he pours on accusations, and what we need to do is stay out of those traps. And the way to do it is hang around men of like hearts, like minds, and have the sense to stay away from evil. The Bible says, and Paul told Timothy, run from youthful lust, run from it. So anyway, and it talks more about it as we go through Proverbs, but think that's very good to have that discernment and have that sense to stay away from evil yeah because sometimes you know the the other person can be as innocent as you at the beginning you know they're they don't really have anything in mind uh they're not really trying to trap you um but if you if you open the door for um things like that to happen or, i mean it, it can just be so easy and so subtle that um, you that's why it is important to covet i mean to really 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 um desire seek after uh pursue you know you use whatever words you want but um the gifts of the holy spirit of discernment is definitely one that um you'll appreciate and um uh, it will benefit you as you go through life. It's, uh, you know, some people would, <laughs> they pray that they had the discernment to pick the right lottery numbers, but that's not what it's talking about. <laughs> no, and all of us have had the, I'm going to give you a metaphor. When we go deer hunting, we dress in the color of the woods. We try and get in a deer stand that gets above the where the deer can scent smell our scent we actually put doe scent out so the males come by and smell that scent and so we want them to come into our trap at least close enough to take a shot at them either with a bow pat was with me when i got a deer with a crossbow once and i was shaking so bad after i took the shot he thought i was having a heart attack but it was just that buck fever you know you get at you shoot a deer and uh it's just we are you know that environment that's their environment and so we got to fit ourselves into that if we go out there and wear bright colored clothes and cologne they put cologne on you're not going to see a deer but if you get in their environment and you you know try and trap them by looking like them smelling like them staying out of their sight then they walk right up to you so that's what the de devil's trying to do to us well, the other verse that I'd point out, really, is verse 21. In my Bible, the version I have is NIV. And it says, for the upright will live in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. Hmm. And there's a positive to having understanding and knowledge and discretion that benefits us. So it's not just a defensive warning. It is got positive benefits to living the kind of life they're talking about here. And uh, you'll be established in your family and your business and your neighborhood. You know, they talk about it in Bible terms. It's in the land. But um, we're, we're a force ourselves, actually. I'm going to interrupt this just for a second because I want the, the audience to know that uh, although we honor uh, each other with our presence here, we also honor our families. And one of our members has a birthday party that he's going to go to for one of his grandsons. And uh, he, just keep in mind um, those, you know, the, the important things in your lives as you go about living your daily lives that, uh, so, you know, sometimes you have to maybe make a sacrifice and quit doing what you're 
doing that benefits you and go do something that'll benefit somebody else. So Tim, we know you got to get out to Henry's birthday party and uh, don't want to keep you here. So yeah, Lisa's Lisa's gonna herd me out the door. So okay, God bless God bless you guys. Thanks Take a lot. Take care. Hey Bye Tim. Now. I wanted to make sure we got a, a chance to explain why Tim was leaving and, and sure. the importance of uh, sticking with family needs like Steve's doing right now. He's nurse Steve taking care of his wife, who's recently had some surgery. So that's all cool, good stuff. Yes, it is. The giving of yourself. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and George, you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. That is love in action. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, you you want to continue uh, discussion on air, or we can close this recording down and just let's go ahead and close out. All right. Air. Yeah, go ahead, George. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us together here today, and the opportunity to record it so that we can share it with others. We pray that uh, all the ears and hearts that it goes into be uh, prepared to receive it and not receive what we've said, but we'll receive what your words say in a way that will help them. Uh, and that's our intent. We thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.